Can a Tesla valve stop a tsunami of dinosaurs? Tesla valves are famous within the engineering field for their reliability and performance, but do they perform well enough to work on dinosaurs? Today, I found myself tasked with this seemingly impossible task of stopping a flood of dinosaurs with a valve that is intended to be used with fluids. I was going about my normal day, walking through the park and engineering a brand new enclosure for the Megalodon, a prehistoric shark and not a dinosaur. I've wanted one of these for a while, but don't have the money to buy the DLC yet in the game. So in the meantime, I'm getting his enclosure already, when suddenly I get a phone call. Hello, this is Engineer Gaming. Hey, this is Phil. I entered here at the main Jurassic World and I've seen some of your videos. Phil? I, I don't know a Phil. You've never heard of me? I'm Owen's cousin. Owen Grady? Like the Velociraptor trainer? Yeah. Well, uh, anyways, we got a flood of dinosaurs rushing at our park and we need an engineer to help us out. We tried contacting the real civil engineer, who we got this video idea from, but he's too famous and busy to even check his email. We also tried Mark Rover, but he doesn't seem to know video games, so we had to come to you. Fortunately, you don't seem to be that famous or busy, since only 0.3% of your viewers are subbed. You think you could help us out? Uh, maybe, but I'm pretty busy right now. I've got a project I'm working on. We'll send a Megalodon to your park if you do a good job. Oh, well, uh, I'll be right over. I was going to do this job, and this is how I was going to get my Megalodon. All I had to do was put my engineering skills to use. Phil sent over some documents, and they wanted a Tesla valve used to stop the dinosaurs. I knew that I was going to build them the most amazing valve they had ever seen, but first, I needed to do some research to find out what a Tesla valve is and how they work. Valvular conduit. Oh, I recognize this figure. No moving parts. Doesn't this guy make cars? In this video, we won't only learn the workings of this valve, we will make an attempt to understand how Tesla's mind works. This is SolidWorks, an advanced 3D modeling system that I use with all of my engineering work at college. And this is a model of a Tesla valve. I'm going to attempt to build it in my other 3D modeling system to show you how it would work. All right, this is a very poorly drawn Tesla valve. And this water gets dispersed evenly, and then it slows down right here because there's a bunch of turbulence. I can explain more of the engineering along the way, but for now, let's get started. All right, Phil sent over the location for this park, so I came over to check it out. As you can see, the situation looks pretty dire. We've got a couple hundred T-Rexes over here, and we need to figure out how to make a Tesla valve to slow them just to a trickle. If we're not able to do this, I'm not going to be able to get my Megalodon. Everything is on the line here, so I'm going to just use some of these small electrified fences to attempt to make the valve. We have our first iteration of the Tesla valve, and we're gonna see if this is able to do the job so that we can get that Megalodon. All right, let's delete these walls and see if it stops the dinosaurs from going through. I was about to make a discovery that would throw a wrench into all of my plans that I had had for this park. But before we get to that, I want to tell you a little bit about the engineering method that I'm gonna be using on later in this video to solve the problem. There are essentially eight steps to the engineering method. Design, Analysis, Procurement, Logistics, Assembly, Performance, Sustainability, and Death and Recycling. I'm not going to get into all of them right now, but just keep them in mind as you watch the video and I'll go into more detail about them later. As you can see, there's still a lot of dinosaurs in the pen, but quite a few have been able to make it through, which is very unfortunate because that means that we're not going to be able to get the Megalodon quite yet. In fact, we have 42 dinosaur threats. Phil mentioned to us that in order for us to have a successful Tesla valve, we needed to have less than 10 dinosaur threats out of the 400 T-Rexes that were flooding the park. So this is where we encounter Obstacle 1. Before we get into how we're going to try to engineer over the obstacle, I'm going to show you how the Tesla valve is supposed to work. Alright, I put some walls in to simulate how the dinosaurs are actually supposed to flow. The Tesla valve was actually first called a valvular condit by Nikola Tesla himself, and was built as a fluid form of the AC-DC converter. Some of the key factors in the Tesla valve that make it work the way it does is the idea of converging versus diverging flow. If you go through a tube and it suddenly widens, right here it's very narrow, and then it widens here, the fluid going through it slows down, causing there to be a greater pressure increase. Whereas, if you're coming from the right to the left, going from a wider flow to a narrower one, the fluid speeds up, causing there to be lower pressure, and it goes faster towards its destination. But these dinosaurs are obviously not acting like a fluid, so we need to figure out how we can get them to act more like a fluid, 
and cause them to follow the paths that a Tesla valve should make. If we're gonna be able to complete our commission, there is the major obstacle which we're gonna have to overcome. We need to figure out how to get all of these dinosaurs to act as if they were a fluid instead of smart Tyrannosaurus Rexes. To do that, we're just gonna run some simple tests to see what happens. The first thing I wanna do in order to figure out if they are or not a fluid is provide them two channels, a wide one and a narrow one. If they do act like a fluid, they should go slower through the wider one and quicker through the narrow one. To try to overcome this obstacle, I'm gonna be using the engineering method. First is design. We need to figure out how we're gonna be able to design the Tesla valve so that it's able to overcome the obstacle of T-Rexes not being a fluid. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear as if they're faster, which means that our hypothesis about them acting like a fluid in this regard is null. Since the dinosaurs don't slow down on their own going down the wider channel, we're gonna have to figure out a way to make them do it artificially. Learning from our first experiment and deciding to do something differently is called analysis, and it's the second part of the engineering method. One of my viewers suggested using rocks to stop dinosaurs from being able to cross over areas, so we're gonna see if putting some rocks in here will slow them down at all. I like these big ones. Oh, these, these, are, these are good. And now it's time to test to see whether or not we can get these dinosaurs to artificially act as a fluid. Okay, now this is extremely interesting. The dinosaurs do not appear to be able to get through the side with the rocks at all, so they're avoiding it and going towards the narrower side, which causes it to speed up. For this test, I'm just putting two rocks in to see if any of the dinosaurs will go through the path on the left. If my suspicions are correct, then a couple of them will, but they'll end up going slower than the ones on the right. Hmm, my suspicions were wrong. They seem to be quite flooding the left side. I don't think that we'll have room for the larger rocks, so I'm gonna try some of these smaller to medium sized rocks and see what happens with the dinosaurs. First of all, can the dinosaurs just step over these smaller rocks? The next two phases of the engineering method are procurement and logistics, and they kind of go together. It's talking about where you're gonna source the materials and how you're gonna get them all to arrive on the same day. All right, can the dinosaurs step over the rocks? It does not appear as if they can. It appears to be a solid wall. This is so interesting. It's a fence without being a fence. Now what happens if we make a bit of a minefield? It does not appear to be slowing them down. Which side will they go through faster? A side made completely of rocks that they have to navigate or a side made of completely fences that they have to navigate? Hmm, they do seem to prefer the, the side with the rocks. I wanna see what would happen with more dinosaurs being pushed into this maze. There are the same amount of dinosaurs that want to get out, but can they all navigate safely through the maze? Or will it slow them down substantially? I was about to stumble onto a realization that would change the trajectory of my entire park. It would let me get the Megalodon, and it would let me finally accomplish my goal of having the coolest shark in my Jurassic World. But first, I want to tell you exactly why turbulent flow in Tesla valves is so important. It goes back to the concept of converging versus diverging flows. When you have a diverging flow, it makes these little currents. This is called turbulence. And essentially, it takes a bunch of the energy out of a fluid. This slows down the flow in Tesla valves a lot and is what causes them to actually work and be a one directional valve without any moving parts. And the dinosaurs are starting to trickle out. It doesn't appear as if they're all making it out at the same rate, it is slowing them down. This seems to be acting as a turbulent force would be for fluids. So I think this is how we're gonna solve our problem of the Tesla valve. With all of the knowledge in mind, which we have now, we're gonna lean into the next phase, and that phase is assembly. The assembly is really about building whatever you're engineering, so we need to figure out how to fit a Tesla valve of magnitude and size into this little gap between the incoming flood and the park. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the next section of the engineering method is performance, and this is where we're going to do it, right here. We need to evaluate to see if this Tesla valve works how we want it to. There was a lot riding on this. If this worked, I could go grab my Megalodon and finally put it into my park. 
For the Tesla valve to work, it only had to leak a little bit, and this is how all Tesla valves work. They all work better with higher pressure input flows, and they will always leak a little bit because they're never able to stop 100% of the water. Anyways, let's see if I was able to stop the dinosaurs with this ingenious Tesla valve. These fences act as if they're a bunch of turbulence. The dinosaurs come around the outside, meet the turbulence in the middle, repeat, and end up at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears as if we have made a highly successful Tesla valve. A trickle of dinosaurs have been able to make it to the end, but not many. I had finished the valve, and I was going to get my Megalodon. I finished up building the Megalodon enclosure, and walked around the park waiting for a call. Hello, this is Engineer Gaming. Hey, this is Steven from HR Jurassic World. Uh, hey, uh, what's up? Well, we've seen you've been doing some voluntary work on our park. Voluntary? What do you mean? I was assigned this by Phil, the intern. Oh, that Phil guy. Well, he doesn't actually work for us. He's just an overzealous guest who wants us to hurry up on our projects. What? What do you mean? He said he was going to pay me a Megalodon. Well, I hate to break it to you. We have no Megalodon and no money, so we can't pay you. No, I've been wanting that Megalodon for so long. However, as I went back to my park to finish building the new lagoon, I realized that even though I didn't get the Meg, I did have a lot of other blessings. I learned how to use Tesla valves in Jurassic World and implemented them into the path structure of my park. Maybe it'll even help with the guest flow. And at the end of the day, as I watched my baby Mosasaurus eat his first great white shark, I was content.